Hey everyone, I wanted to bring your attention to some new features we have in the latest NVIDIA release for Unreal Engine 4. There are a lot of details I could talk about, things that have been developing for some time, and features we have coming soon. But I want to focus in on some important features we have today that are new to ray tracing in the Unreal Engine, and that is support for real-time ray traced foliage. If you've been following the development of ray tracing since its introduction to the Unreal Engine over a year and a half ago, you know that this has been a challenging issue to solve. Today, I'll walk you through how this works and how you can implement it for your project. First things first, I'll show you what this looks like. Everything in this scene is constructed from foliage on top of landscape and is making use of the latest 426 engine features for volumetric clouds and water. If you haven't tried 426 yet, and are working on open world scenes, I highly recommend you do that for these features alone. You'll see that they're compatible with ray tracing out of the box and don't require much artist time to get something that looks good. The relevant console commands are here. When doing ray traced foliage now, there are four new commands to be aware of that will make this possible. These first two commands control how shadows are projected into the world. The Evaluate WPO command tells the ray tracer to use your material world position offset settings. It defaults to zero, but can be set to one or negative one. One tells it to evaluate all WPO foliage, and negative one tells it to use only those foliage instances you want. This is done as an optimization. Excessive amounts of WPO evaluation can potentially cause slowdowns. The test map, in fact, has over 200,000 foliage instances and two dozen unique foliage types, and is set to a value of 1, and it runs great. But if you want to be more selective, the negative 1 setting will constrain that to only the foliage instances you specify. The next command, Simulation Count, determines the number of unique simulations that are generated for each foliage instance. So what's going on here? Well, it's too expensive to match the ray traced shadow to the WPO animation for every instance and variation. So for performance reasons, we allow you to set a limited number of simulations for each foliage type. With this number, less is better performance and higher numbers produce more accuracy. In this test scene, the simulation count is set to one. So unless you're looking closely for differences in shadow behavior, you may not even notice it. For good performance, I would recommend four or less and try for the lowest number possible. And if you want more accuracy, simply raise the number. These next two commands control how the foliage is self-shadowed. Use bias for skip WPO eval should be set to one. This makes it so the self-shadows on foliage can animate. Max bias for inexact geometry is a distance value that controls how far the WPO self-shadow can travel on the foliage as it animates. A good number here will depend on how far it moves from the geometry base position. So the right number could be, for example, 5, 10, or 20. It will depend on the scene and what gives you the best results. So real-time ray traced foliage is available in both 425 and 426 NVRTX branches. The commands do look a little different in 425, but it's an easy difference. Just remove the word geometry from the first two commands and you're good to go. Thanks for listening today. Hope this helps your development and have a happy holiday.